Good evening and a warm welcome to our online worship service. Let us begin our St. Peter's Tide Commemoration Evensong online service in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us hear the call to worship. This evening we are gathered here in the presence of the Almighty to remember with gratitude the service rendered by the Brotherhood of St. Peter during the turbulent years of the early 20th century. Had it not been for the timely intervention of these saintly men in nurturing our institutions, the Bishop Cotton schools in Bangalore would have long since faded into oblivion. Today, we rededicate ourselves to the values of our founders and invoke God's blessings on the schools as they continue to shine forth as reputed centers of learning. With gratitude for all the blessings that we have received from these prestigious institutions, shall we sing to the glory of God, praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Let us continue to praise God. Let us sing to the glory of God the Founder's Hymn, We Build Our School. Yeah. 
let us enter into an act of adoration. Now, the Diocesan Secretary, Reverend Paul Dhanshekaran, would lead us in the litany of adoration. The litany of adoration. Lord, first tend to endure in the winter of strife, shelter from storm, protection through life, a response for the blessings of each day. We praise your holy name, O Lord. Lord, for footsteps to follow, a road that is true, a love that endures whatever we do. Our response, for the blessings of each day, we praise your holy name, O Lord. Lord, for faith to believe, hope in our heart, your spirit enabling us as we play our part, our response. For the blessings of each day, we praise and magnify your holy name, O Lord. Let us continue to pray. O Almighty and Most Holy One, who in return for the strong and generous faith, the profound and sincere humility, and the burning love for you, did reward St. Peter with singular privileges and in particular with the leadership of the other apostles and the primacy of the whole church of which he was made the foundation. Do bestow on us the grace of your lively faith that shall not fear to profess itself openly in his entirety and in all of its manifestations, even to the shedding of blood, if occasion should demand it, and to sacrifice of life itself rather than surrender. Grant us, likewise, a sincere loyalty to our institution, that we may ever remain most closely and sincerely united to the Church. Grant, moreover, that we may follow in all humility and meekness, hear teaching and advice, and may be obedient to all our precepts, in order to be able here on earth to enjoy a peace that is sure and undisturbed, and to attain one day in heaven to everlasting happiness. Amen. Now the scripture lesson appointed for this special occasion would be read to us. First, the Old Testament. The Old Testament lesson is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 16, verses 16 to 21. Book of Jeremiah, beginning to read at verse 16. But now I will send for many fishermen, declares the Lord, and they will catch them. After that, I will send for many hunters, and they will hunt them down on every mountain and hill from the services of the rocks. My eyes are on their ways. They are not hidden from me, nor is their sin concealed from my eyes. I will repay them double for their wickedness and their sin, because they have defiled my land with the lifeless forms of their vile images and have filled my inheritance with their detestable idols. Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge in the time of distress, to you the nations will come from the ends of the earth and say, Our ancestors possessed nothing but false gods, worthless idols that did them no good. Do people make their own gods? Yes, but they are not gods. Therefore, I will teach them, this time I will teach them my power and might. Then they will know that my name is the Lord. Here ends the Old Testament lesson. Thanks be to thee, O God. Now, our pride, the school choir, would render a special number. When the storm raged about 
then the disciples were afraid For the waves were high and the ship was tossed They could not find their way And they awoke the Master Saying, Lord, please save us now He rebuked the winds and the sea who come And they all wondered how God sees the storm from the other side He knows the lessons learned And just beyond the clouds He sees the skies He speaks peace to the raging storm Like the man on the sea did, I have called on God in prayer. When it seemed to me all hope was gone, and in my deep despair, I remembered what the Lord said when He calmed that troubled sea. And I know once more how He sees the Now the Gospel lesson would be read to us. The Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 5, verses from 1 to 11. St. Luke, chapter 5, beginning to read at the first verse. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So 
they signal to their partners in the other boat to come and help them and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink when simon peter saw it he fell down at jesus knees saying depart from me for i am a sinful man o lord for he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken and so also were james and john the sons of zebedee who were partners with simon and jesus said to simon do not be afraid from now on you will catch men so when they had brought their boats to land they forsook all and followed him this is the gospel on this special occasion the guest preacher is our beloved bishop right reverend dr prasanna kumar samuel the chairman of the board of management on behalf of the principal the members of the board of management and the staff i welcome our beloved bishop to share with us the message from the word of god greetings to you all in the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ year after year st peter's day is an important day in the life of bishop gotten boys school and bishop gotten girls school we celebrate the patron saint st peter often we think of st peter with our jokes of heaven and the pearly gates but st peter's life and witness can speak to us about our own discipleship today we are a privileged lot to celebrate this great legacy which has been passed on to us it's more than 150 years god's faithfulness and uh, your service in educating the lives of these young ones and the foundation of these institutions had been our forefathers and mothers and we need to be grateful to god for the vision which they were able to begin this institution in spite of difficult times and calamity in spite of plague and in spite of going through various challenging times god was able to sustain this institution at another year we have entered although we are not able to have a service but the online services has become uh, the order of the day so i would like to thank the principals dr mrs lavanya mitran the principal of bishop cotton girls school professor dr edwin christopher the principal of bishop cotton boys school the staff and the old cottonian associations friends the officers of the diocese and on behalf of the karnataka central diocese i bring greetings and god's blessings on this very important day where you are able to celebrate st peter's day during the early days of world war 2 when the nazis invaded france french citizens took down all signposts all the nazi armies advanced they didn't know which way to turn or in which direction lay their objective does it seem to you that the signposts of life have all been taken down because we are going through this covid-19 pandemic we are going through uncertainties in our lives they were taken down by the french people just to confuse the enemy they were taken down by the enemy so that they'll get confused we really don't know which way to turn until we open the scriptures most of our institutions and churches are signposts signpost showing to the future signpost saying that this is a christian institution and signpost where we are able to understand the only reliable signposts are there it is the signpost because we are deeply grounded on the foundation of jesus the rock peter's life is a signpost for us today 
although he is a patron saint, but you know, year after year, we keep listening various sermons and we keep thinking about uh, Saint Peter, the patron saint of these institutions. After we have gone through this particular pandemic, Pope Francis says, the moment in history is, I quote, a time to choose what matters in life and what passes away. A time to separate what is necessary from what is not. It is a time to get our lives back on track with regard to you, the Lord, and to the others. We have this online worship this morning. In the uncertainties of this pandemic, we are certain that God is still in control. We choose to believe in a God who can heal the world. Choices you and I make are a gift of God. God given us man the ability to make decisions on his own that will affect his or her life. Life is about making decisions. Most of the decisions we make, we don't really pay attention to. We choose what radio station or what TV station that you like to listen to, channel. What to eat for dinner or what movie you need to go and see. We don't spend hours agonizing over these small decisions that we make, the choices that we make. The choice presents itself and we make it and most of the time just carry on with the day. But there are times when the decision seems bigger. We have to choose a career, choose a home or choose a spouse. These are the kinds of decisions that keep us up at night. They move us to seek counsel from others and carefully weigh what are our options before we take a decision. Big or small, we are always deciding something. But the big and the small are not isolated from each other. In fact, every small decision is in reality a reflection of a larger one. In other words, life is about big decisions actualizing in little choices. We make our choices and our choices turn around and make us. Because our choices matter. The Bible speaks of them very often, the choices that people have made. This morning on this great day, we are going to learn from Peter's life the choices that he made. There was an option given to Peter, following or fishing. Remember the story of Peter and John one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gensaret. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats so full that they began to sink. Peter had a choice. He left the world's security behind him and chose to walk with Christ. Was it following or fishing? Jesus said, Come and follow me. I will make you fishers of men. It's a walk of faith. He commands us to follow what Peter did. He left the boat, the net, the bankroll of fish and began a new fishing enterprise. And the new enterprise was fishers of men. We catch them. And God cleans them. The choice was before him and Peter chose Christ. Just like Peter, God has called you and me to leave your nets and follow him. Leave all those things that are pulling you are pulling you down. The influence and the various things of the world in which you have bogged down yourself. Brothers and sisters, continue in your walk of faith. Although this COVID-19 pandemic 
has brought in so much of challenges and so much of changes in our lifestyle, in the way that we worship, in the way that we do, and in the way that we think. Let us follow. The choice is given to follow Jesus and Peter was willing to follow, rejecting all that he owned. The next choice that was given to Peter was from the passage of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, whether it was subjective or objective in nature. Jesus wanted an appraisal from the disciples. Appraisals have become part of the modern world. But while Jesus was living in this world, he wanted to have a true appraisal and ask the disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Who do people say that I am? There in that passage we see, they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah and one of the prophets. But what about you? asked, who do you say that I am? It is not what people say, it is what you say. As disciples of Christ who have followed me these three and a half years, and who have seen me performing miracles, and seen me having control over the universe, and seen me teaching, preaching, and healing. Who do you think that I am? Simon Peter was a bold disciple. He answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But when Jesus personalized the question and asked, What do you say that I am? It was Peter who spoke up. It's one thing to quote one what others say about God, but it is yet another thing for you to speak about God from your own personal experience. Is it subjective or it is objective in nature? It is one thing to read about a great Christian conviction about God. It's quite another thing to speak about your own conviction about God. Can you say with personal conviction that God is great, that God is strong, that God is loving, that God is faithful? Because He is. Some of you can say, you have seen God in motion in your own life. Peter watched God in motion up close and personal, working miracles, healing hearts, touching lives. And ultimately, he was able to come out objectively by saying, you are the Christ, the one who has come into the world. That was a great proclamation that Peter had to make openly by saying, you are the Christ. God is in you. He has created you for greater things. To speak up for Christ. To stand for truth. For stand for justice. When no one else can speak up, God has chosen you objectively to stand and speak up for whatever God wants you to speak. Because God gives you the power and the wisdom and the discretion for you to speak. Thirdly, from the book of Luke's Gospel, chapter 22. This is a scene where Jesus on the Monday Thursday was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. Now he was taken for trial in different places. One such occasion, Peter followed Jesus Christ. Was it a sacred statement that he made or a sincere statement that he made? A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked very closely at him and said, This man was with him. He also looked like a Galilean. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. The reply was, Man, I am not, it replies. When it comes to your own life situation, Peter denies Jesus three times. Brothers and sisters, there will come a time when you will have to make a decision whether or not to stand up for Christ. Whether that's going to be a sacred statement or a sincere statement. Peter chose 
to deny Christ. Have you had a breaking experience in your life where you broke down and many times even now when we go through this trying situation many question where is god christ is here to offer you restoration christ is here to offer you forgiveness christ is here to give us a healing remember the story of peter again god did not leave him there although he forsook jesus christ jesus was able to come back to him and called him for the second time to send him into the world not only peter near the end of his life moses challenged his people this way in deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 19 This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have said before you life and death blessings and curses now choose life so that you and your children may live choose life Joshua he was an old man nearing death he reminded the people of Israel about what God has done for them then he exhorted them with these words but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you Then choose yourself this day whom you will serve whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose hand are you living but as for me and my household we will serve the Lord many years later Elijah stood atop mountain Carmel and addressed the people of Israel this way how long will you be wavering between two opinions if the Lord is God follow him if it is ball follow him it is our choice who are we every single day we make choices that show whether we are courageous or cowardly we choose between the right thing and the convenient thing sticking to a conviction or caving in for the sake of comfort greed and approval We choose either to take a carefully thought out risk or to crawl into a shrinking shell of safety, security and inactivity. We choose either to believe in God and trust him even when we do not always understand his ways or to second guess him and cover in the corners of doubt and fear. The Christian who has been revived by the Holy Spirit of God will be the one who follows in spite of the masses he influences in spite of those around him he is faithful in spite of public opinion he is powerful in spite of the lukewarm standards life is just a series of choices both good and bad there are bad choices made out of greed fear anger or selfishness and then there are good choices made out of compassion love integrity and respect our gospel today is about choices some choices are easily made some are difficult the choices we make today have an impact on the decisions we will be making tomorrow they establish a pattern and the foundation of our life life is all about choices that we make Sometimes we make the right choice and sometimes we don't. But with the choices we make comes the consequences of that choice. The hardest thing to learn in life is which bridge to cross and which bridge to burn. May God enable us this day as we recollect the life of Peter, the choices that he made. Although one choice was not a right choice but he was able to come back to god realize his mistake and god was able to send him and god was able to send him as an apostle today the whole world stands before you and as an individual person make your choice the right choice a sacred choice to follow and to be part of this great kingdom so that we'll be able to say Thank you Lord for being with us.
Thank you again for inviting me to be part of your celebrations. Although it is online, but still thank God for the time and for the tradition of Bishop Cotton Schools in order to commemorate St. Peter's tide and to keep him as the patron saint. God bless you. It's always a blessing to be ministered by our bishop. On behalf of each one of you, I want to thank our bishop for his exhortation. In response to the message from the word of God, shall we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in a Pontus Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He seated at the right hand of the Father, and he'll come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, Bangalore Civil Area Chairman, Reverend Krishiraj Kumar, would lead us in intercessory prayers. After each intercessory prayer, your response is, Almighty Father, may our institutions continue to awake into that heaven of freedom. Let us pray. Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, your response, Almighty Father, may our institutions continue to awake into that heaven of freedom. Where our institutions have not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, your response, Almighty Father, may our institutions continue to awake into that heaven of freedom. Where men, women and children enjoy equal opportunities, your response, Almighty Father, may our institutions continue to awake into that heaven of freedom. Where all children enjoy their childhood and the right to an education, your response, Almighty Father, may our institutions continue to awake into that heaven of freedom. Where people vested with authority and responsibility carry out their duties with justice and put the institutions before selfish ambitions. Your response, Almighty Father, may our institutions continue to awake into that heaven of freedom. Where people work with diligence, integrity and tirelessly strive towards perfection. Your response, Almighty Father, let our institutions awake into that heaven of freedom. Where the mind is led forward by thee into ever-widening thought and action, your response, Almighty Father, let our institutions awake into that heaven of freedom. Now the president of the Old Girls Association would invoke God's blessings. O eternal God, who restored Peter through your grace and favor, empower us to serve you despite our frailties. We glorify your holy name for enabling us to remember your faithful servant Saint Peter and all who have served through the years in sustaining the Bishop Cotton institutions. Bless our schools that they may be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery and the pursuit of wisdom. Grant that those who teach and those who learn may find you to be the source of all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of the students and parents, I request Mrs. 
Karen Richards to lead us in prayer. Prayer for students. Come Holy Spirit, divine creator, true source of light and fountain of wisdom. Pour forth your brilliance upon every Catonian, dissipate the darkness of sin and ignorance which covers them. Grant every student a receptive mind, a retentive memory, method and ease in learning the lucidity to comprehend and abundant grace in self-expression. Guide the beginning of their work, direct its progress, and bring it to successful completion. This I ask through Jesus Christ, true God and true man, living and reigning with you and the Father forever and ever. Amen. Prayer for Parents O God, the Father of mankind, who has bestowed children as a blessing to parents and committed them to their charge to bring them up for thee and to prepare them for eternal life. Help every parent with thy heavenly grace that they may be able to fulfill this most sacred duty and stewardship. Teach them both what to give and what to withhold, when to reprove and when to forbear. Make them to be gentle yet firm considerate and watchful, and deliver them equally from the weaknesses of indulgence and the excess of severity. Grant that, both by word and example, they may be careful to lead our Cotonians in the ways of wisdom and true piety, so that at last they may, with them, be admitted to the unspeakable joys of our true home in heaven, in the company of the Blessed One. Amen. Now the principal, Dr. Lavanya Mitran, would lead us in a very special prayer for the staff serving in the Bishop Cotton Institutions. A prayer for the staff serving the Bishop Cotton Institutions. Lord of all things, we thank you for the women and men you have called to work in Bishop Cotton Institutions. Bless their hearts with your love, joy and peace. Season their words with your patience, kindness and goodness. Fill their minds with your faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. When they respond to your broken-hearted child, show them how to be big-hearted. When they reach out to your rebellious teen, remind them to be obedient to you. When they advise a lost and lonely student, help them to be Christ Jesus to them. When they meet with an angry parent, let them see a child of God. When they give advice to a discouraged colleague, give them helpful and encouraging words. When they speak to visitors and strangers, grant them the gift of hospitality. This I ask in your matchless name. Amen. Let us pray for the leaders. O Almighty God, creator of all that exists, source of life and growth, of peace and joy. We bless you for all your sons and daughters. The gift of administration is yours, and you share it in your goodness with persons like us. Grant us vision and wisdom to engage in governance, good judgment and courage to execute your will, faith and a sense of justice to all who are vested with positions of responsibility. Help us to remember that you share with us the power to administer and the work we do is your work. Give us the satisfaction and joy in the performance of this work. Bless us always with your presence, your insight, your compassion, so we will recognize you anew and praise you as you really are, the master of all that we are and do, the mighty and revered God who shares with us the gift of administration. Amen. In this time of chaos, I request our principal, Dr. Lavanya Mitran, to lead us in a prayer for peace. Prayer for peace. 
O Lord God of infinite mercy, we humbly implore you to look down on the nations now engaged in war. Do not count your people's sins against them, but grant them to repentance, that the last of the human heart may be conquered by your spirit of gentleness and righteousness. Looking mercy on those immediately exposed to peril, comfort the prisoners, relieve the sufferings of the wounded, and show mercy to the dying. According to your good and gracious will, remove the causes and locations of war, and restore peace among the nations. God of peace, pour out your spirit in rich measure on those in high places and low, who continue to seek peace during this time of war. Protect them from hate and violence. Open their ears, their mouths, and their hearts to pursue the goal of peace, and make the citizens they represent responsive to their care. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us rededicate ourselves to the aims and objects of this great institution. Shall we all sing, standing on the promises of Christ my King, Shall we join the choir singing the prayer our Lord has taught us?
let us receive god's blessings with confidence let us receive god's blessings unto god's gracious mercy and protection we commit you the blessings of god almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be amongst you and remain with you in all the endeavors of bishop cotton schools both now and forevermore